Good evening and welcome to it. This is yet another episode of Chess and Wine. We're doing an interview series, a presidential interview series that we've said before. And today we've got as a guest for our show, none other than the uh, <laughs> the famous, um, uh, the most powerful leadership that we've ever known. I don't know, like there's too much that I was, you know what, I'm thinking this should not be the last interview that we do with um, our esteemed guest for tonight. Because I mean, I'm sure there's a lot that we can get to learn from uh, his experiences in uh, chess, in um, his experiences in administration, in uh, hosting events, in chess promotion, and in a whole lot of things. Because he has not only been the president of Chess South Africa, but also the president of Zone 4.5. And I'm talking about Right, Joe Mahomu. It's so exciting. So, Joe, welcome to the Chess and Wine. How are you doing tonight? No, thank you for agreeing to share your experiences and some of your knowledge with us this evening. And, um, yeah, I'm sure you know that there's a lot that we can get to, uh, we can ask you, and I'm thinking that if we're going to do, to do this like the, how we normally do, we'd need to start from way back from when you were introduced to chairs, and obviously all of the players that you've introduced to chairs, but that's going to be your <laughs> many hours. But today, I think we're going to just try and focus on the most pressing issues that we're faced with that a lot of players that I'm, I'm sure are very curious to find out about, like give us a sense of hope, a sense of direction. Or at least if it, if it is a sense of despair, that's still fine. <laughs> but at least we must know where we are. So I'm going to just jump straight to it. The state of chess in South Africa as we are, where we are, as it is right now. Where, where are we? Are we in a good state, in a hopeful state, in a... What can you tell us about the state of chess right now, Mr. Mahomet? Um, uh, Eddie, uh, a lot has happened. But currently what I can tell you is that... Um, um, at national level, the, the the executive committee has been suspended by SASCOG. In fact, Chess South Africa is suspended by SASCOG. And then uh, secondly, uh, FIDE also took over the administration of Chess in South Africa. So they appointed a reverse delegate uh, and also a task, a task force to take care of the administration of chess in South Africa with the sole purpose of trying to normalize the situation. As mm -hmm. you may know, uh, these issues of bickering going this way or that way has been taking place for quite a long time now. Mm, yes, no. Yes. So now the suspension by SASCOG, what is it like? Because obviously I see. That, 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 that's something that we've seen, but we are still not clear on what it means for Chess South Africa to be suspended by SASCOG. Is because we are under the assumption that it's only the executive board that has been suspended. But I mean, is it limited only to the executive board or like the whole Chess in South Africa is suspended? What does this suspension by SASCOG really mean? Can you unpack it for us? Well, let, let me put it this way Chess South Africa is suspended by SASCOG. Uh, remember, Chess South Africa as an organization is represented by its executive board at national level. Mm. So uh, it is the executive board which will answer the questions which SASCO posed to Chess South Africa, uh, failing which uh, SASCO will then take a decision to suspend or to keep uh, Chess as a member. Remember, I must clarify that um, every sporting uh, uh, code in South Africa, be it chess, cricket, netball, rugby, uh, baseball, softball, whatever you call them, all of them, yeah. they are supposed to be members of SASCOC in terms of Sports and Recreation Act because SASCOC is the overall controlling body of sport on behalf of government in South Africa. So Chess South Africa has always been a member of Chess South Africa like I'm sorry, of, of SASCOC, SASCOC yes. like any other like any other sporting body. But so then what happened was that uh, uh, when SASCOC went through 
the situation in Chess South Africa, they realize that Chess South Africa as a sporting code does no longer meet the requirement to be a member of SASCO. And then they then instituted a process by means of which they either have to correct the situation or make sure that the situation is normalized. Yes. And what they did first mm -hmm. was to issue a temporary suspension, uh, which is issued to Chess South Africa mm -hmm. uh, on the basis that uh, Chess South Africa is no longer meeting the membership requirements. Remember, to be a member of SASCO, every federation has got to prove to SASCO that they are functioning properly. By that, it means they are holding their meetings, yes. national meetings. Mm -hmm. They are catering the interest of the players. They are uh, accounting to accounting according to according to the the, 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 the constitution of Chess South Africa. In this case, the executive board is holding meeting with the council, where in terms of the constitution of Chess South Africa, uh, the council received the reports from the executive board, and then uh, one such report is a financial report. It's also your activity report. Right. But then, as you may know, that um, that relationship between the executive board and the council no longer existed, at, um, uh, I think, uh, for quite a long time. Yes, yes. But then now, before we, go, we get to that, I just wonder, now, is there some benefits to being a member of SASCOC or is it just some of those affiliations that are just mandatory but there's just no benefits to it because we want to know are we missing out on something are we not missing out on something because i'm thinking that in the past two three years or is it four years when SASCOC hasn't been aware or i don't know if they've been in we've been a member but there haven't been any of those um for instance uh financial statements or any auditing uh, that was happening with south africa or i'm just wondering is SASCOC um, monitoring federations on an annual basis or they do not? They just keep your membership and whenever something is called into question, they can just check and come to you. Or they only notice when you've got someone to apply and you need an approval by SASCOC. And, and like, that just causes a bit of confusion because I know I'm thinking that if well, SASCOC was to be involved, they would have been involved, say, maybe two, three years ago. Or was there something that was stopping them from being involved back then? I don't know. I've asked too many questions in one <laughs> sentence. I yeah, know. no, no, no. I, I know you. Yeah, the first question was that: Is there any benefit of any code to be part of SASCO? Mm -hmm. Yes. The answer is yes. In which sense? In the sense that, it, in terms of the law, South African uh, Sport and Recreation Act, yes, the the right to award colours to players who represent the country rests with SASCO, but SASCOP does it on the on the on the procedure that will be uh, submitted to SASCOP uh, by a federation. Then SASCOP will then engage the federation just to see if that policy is aligned to the national policy. Uh, the first thing is awarding colours to whoever represents South Africa outside. Yes. So meaning that no one can go outside the country without the recognition by SASCO. That's the first benefit. The second benefit is uh, it's financial. Okay. When we say financial is that uh, for government to advance financial and otherwise resources to a federation, mm -hmm. it is SASCO that will indicate to the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture that indeed this federation is in good standing, therefore it deserves to be supported. Okay. All right, that sounds like yes, a big thing. It okay. deserves to be supported. Mm. Uh, actually, uh, South Cox stands in between government and the federation. Uh, the, the government has set up South Cox so that South Cox uh, monitors and oversees the activities of every federation in order to advise to advise government 
Mm. Uh, whether this federation or that really deserves support. Remember, when I say support, uh, if I were to speak directly about just South Africa, mm. uh, just before 2018, uh, uh, just South Africa as a, as a sporting body, uh, Department of Sports Arts and Culture used to advance 1.8 million every year to to Chess South Africa. Okay, wow. and which which means if South if Chess South Africa does not meet the requirements to be a member of SASCO, uh, then the 1.8 million falls away, yeah. and oh. indeed it has fallen away since 20 since 2017. Yeah, because, all right, now I see that's a lot. So, number one, in terms of the colors, it's still possible for players to go play internationally and obviously, no, I'm just confusing this. Because it's not possible for South Africa to be invited for international events without Sascox approval now, is it? No, no, no. It's, uh, let me put it this way. Mm. Uh, South Africa can be invited anywhere else Chess south africa can be invited yes Chess south africa can be invited anywhere else yes uh, as to whether they can send a team there that's where sasco comes in because sasco does not control the invitations from outside okay. sasco controls the exit to outside mm. so, so so what has been happening is that uh, remember uh, Every federation here in South Africa has its roots or it has its links with its international federation. Yes. Like uh, chess, FIDE. Uh, there is FIDE. Yes. Football, there is FIFA. FIFA. Yeah. And so on and so on. You mm. name them. Mm. The relationship, that vertical relationship between an international federation and a national federation may exist. But you find that uh, locally, the horizontal relationship between South, the, the, the National Federation and South Coke may not exist. Mm. And in that case, the only role which South Coke will play is not, to, uh, is not to award colors. It's also not to give you any additional funds that you may need. So that means the team can go and play being invited by the international federation but they cannot say that they are playing for south africa as in the case that we had with uh, the players that went to the uh, the african international uh, african individual chess championship exactly exactly because um, because the the horizontal relationship was no longer there mm. uh, between the national federation and south Cook, you mm. know but then uh, uh, lo logically logically Mm. Under normal circumstances, once the National Olympic Committee of a country takes a decision about a federation, mm. then the international body follows suit in terms of whether recognizing or not recognizing. That is why in the in the FIDE Charter, Mm. Which is which is like a constitution of feed. Yes, uh, they recognize a. Well, they have got a clause which deals with non-interference in sovereign states. Yes, but then at the same time they are guided by the National Olympic Committee. In our case, they are guided by the action of SASCO. Yes. Because SASCO stands in that place of an Olympic committee. Yes, because, because it's the South African Sascoc... it's Confederation and Olympics Committee, right? Yes, yes. 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 You see, that is why when SASCO decided to suspend Chess South Africa, mm. FIDA followed suit by by taking away the administration from the executive committee. But that's the message that we never got, though. Has FIDE also suspended uh, Chess South Africa, or they're no, not? No, they don't no. suspend. They just take over. How? With what's the what's what? What is it? What does it mean with, with what FIDE is doing? Because I know that the appointment of a reverse delegate is something that that's supposed to communicate something. What does it communicate? Remember, uh, 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 when a federation is suspended by FIDE, mm -hmm. it means that federation. Nothing can happen with that federation. The first thing, 
the, 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 the players cannot be recognized to play anywhere else in any tournament. Mm. That is what happened in 20, in 20, 2013-2014. FIDE took a decision to suspend Chess South Africa. Therefore, it stopped everybody, including the players, and they were banned. In other words, everybody else was banned. Mm. The executive committee is not recognized. The players are not recognized and so on. Mm. That's when FIDE took a decision to suspend mm. a federation. In this moment, FIDE did not decide to suspend the Chess South Africa. FIDE decided that they are no longer recognizing the leadership of, of, of Chess South Africa by appointing a reverse delegate and a task force. And what grounds do? In other words, what FIDE does, mm. uh, because its suspension will mean no player will play anywhere. Okay. Yes. So they don't want to, the FIDE's approach is that they do not want to to disadvantage the players. So was FIDE's but decision? At time, Sorry. But at the same at the same time, they recognize the fact that the the administration, the, the administrators of Chess South Africa are not doing what is right. And therefore, what they do, they f do not recognize the, the executive board but and then... appoint people from FIDE level to play that role of the executive board in South Africa so as to help the players, the arbiters and everybody who wants to play outside. But was, was FIDES waiting on SASCOG to do something or could they also have done something before SASCOG acted? Like, I'm, I'm... They, they could have done something on their own. Mm. They could have done something on their own. And when they didn't, what informs their decision to do it now after SASCOG's uh, action? Yes. I think the biggest, the, the biggest of them all is the National Olympic Committee has declared its displeasure Mm -hmm. about how Chess South Africa is run. As a result, linked to their non-interference in sovereign states, they then got a cue, a clear cue, that even if they, they, they could not come and interfere about what happens in South Africa in running chess, but the National Olympic Committee has announced yeah. that the so-called committee which is running chess is no longer compliant with the regulations of South Africa. And as FIDE, they have no option but to act. They could have acted in two ways. They could ban, completely ban just South Africa, which means they ban everybody, including the players, or they could have played what they did now to, to deal with the administration, take away the administration from just South Africa. But as far as you know, point, as far appoint, as you know, uh, appoint appoint the reverse, the reverse delegate. delegate. The task yes. Force. Yes. But then now, as far as you know, yes, uh, the executive of Chess South Africa was not compliant with the SASCOC, um with with SASCOC in any way. But, and obviously, SASCOC decided to act in the in this fashion. Were they compliant with FIDE in any way? No. They were not compliant with feed. That is why in one of the meetings, in one of the meetings we, as provinces, we had with the uh, SASCOC and in the presence of feed, we, provinces were very articulate that, uh, look, it looks like the action by feed was late. Yeah. Uh, 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 although they insisted it wasn't late, but they felt like they, 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 the action by FIDE was late because FIDE knew, for an example, let, let me just sketch out one or two things which uh, indicates whether you are in compliance with FIDE or not. Yeah. In the first place, you must have a democratic elections mm. where the committee which has been elected exists. Yes. Or at least the majority of the committee that has been elected exists. And that was not the case with this conservative? And that was that, that has not been the case with Chess South Africa for some time. <laughs> De despite the fact that the lower structures of Chess South Africa, like the provinces, mm. have sent signals to feed 
to indicate to them that the situation here at home is not normal because the one aspect which is the elect democratically elected executive board does not exist yes. uh, they still did not pay much attention to it mm. and then the second thing is the issue of financial reporting to feed because in terms of feed statutes every member federation has got an obligation to pay a certain amount as a membership fee mm -hmm. yes to feed so to date internally nobody knows whether that part has been has been met with with feed because at some point feed was sending accounts to yeah. South Africa indicating that South Africa is in areas. Mm. So today, nobody knows whether those areas have been covered or not. But I'm, I'm just indicating the fact that it was very clear from the side that there they are indications that uh, the executive board in Chess South Africa was not, not in good standing with FIDE. But yet Even they still... FIDE could have acted. Yes. So, which makes us doubt FIDE in some way. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on from that. Let's move straight now to the reverse delegate. Um, we have a reverse delegate appointed by um, the name of, uh, by, what's, what's his name? Mr. Lekane is, right? Yeah. Onelekan uh, Adeyemi. Onelekan Adeyemi. Adeyemi. Yes. He's Adeyemi. He's, a, he's, a, he's a, uh, vice president of FIDE. But he's, he's, he's resident in Nigeria. Okay. But this is not the first time that we've had a reverse delegate in South Africa. I remember, in, uh, was it in the, the year of, um, was it was it last year when the Red Moja event took place? Because there was a, I think, was it uh, Ian Wilkinson or something? Yes, there was uh, uh, also, coincidentally, a vice president. Yes. Uh, <laughs> then, then he was a vice president of FID. Mm -hmm. He was only elected. He was only not not returned to office in the elections of 2022. He was appointed as a reverse delegate. He was from Jamaica. Yes. He was appointed as a reverse delegate to come and try and make sure that they normalize the situation mm -hmm. in South Africa. The tasks of which were very clear. Yes. Get democratic elections properly done, mm. and then unite everyone in South Africa, and then give report to FIDE uh, on the elections. But unfortunately, the, the previous reverse delegate came in. Uh, at first, we thought he was zooming on to the right things, yes. but later on, things changed. What? He no longer was he no longer was interested in uh, in making sure that the democratic elections took place. <laughs> but now that's you see, Ed, are, are there any repercussions for his actions or lack of actions, like in that in that other way, so that at least we can know that we can trust this reverse delegate because he's because now if we're thinking, for instance, if we were to make up some silly stories and say that previous reverse delegate was bought. And obviously he took the money and left and never paid any attention. I'm not saying that. That's just, I'm, I'm just saying, if we were to say that. You're just assuming. I'm just, let, let's, say, let's just say something like that would have happened with the reverse delegate. What would stop us to assume the same thing with this one? The, uh, the same thing possible, yes. You know what? Uh, 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 no, no, not, no, 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 not to, not to cast any aspersion on the current reverse delegate, but just to say that if a reverse delegate does not fulfill his task, what are the repercussions for that? Are there consequences for that? Or is this something that they go try and if they fail, they failed, it's fine. And if they succeed, they've succeeded. It was doable. Like No, there should be repercussions for that. Yeah. Uh, there should be repercussions repercussions from for that from feed. Mm. Uh, for example, the the task is cut out very clear yes. for the reverse delegate what to do because FIDE has recognized that the running of Chess South Africa is not normal. One of the abnormalities is with regard to holding democratic elections and to on accountability of the executive board to its constituencies. And then three, the rest will follow. That is 
your reports, your financial and otherwise. Uh, those things are not in place. Currently, what the reverse delegate is, re is, is expected to do, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's expected to zoom into the first one, ensure that democratic elections are held within three months. Right? Okay. All, although since his appointment, uh, the three months, 20 days within three months have been eaten up. Yeah. So, but we, as a principle, we believe that he can still, because he can't just come in and hold elections. Yeah. He must then level the playing field before elections are held. That's true. That is the part which which the reverse delegate has not done, is trying to explore to do. Yes. The difference this time is that uh, FIDE did not appoint only a reverse delegate. The, the FIDE has appointed a task force. So, a task force consisting of three people. Yes. Uh, and then the, then the reverse delegate. Maybe let me, let me clarify what the reverse delegate is like. Yeah. The reverse delegate is like an administrator of a federation. Like you, you are saying, executive board, stand aside. Yes. And now, but you know that the administrative duties of that federation must still be performed okay. on behalf of the players and all other people who are in that country. So because you are staying the executive stand aside, mm -hmm. then you put this administrator who will then play that role of the executive board. And then according to FIDE language, they do not call him the administrator. They call him a reverse delegate. Okay. But then now, does that mean that he takes a control of, um, let me say, for instance, Chess South Africa's bank accounts, for example? Does he have control of that? Does he have access to that? He's supposed to. He's actually supposed to. He's supposed to take everything, everything. In fact, even the computers. He's the president, he's the, president the treasurer, the secretary, everything of Chess South Africa. But the, the unfortunate part is that. As we speak currently, yeah. he has not taken everything. He has only taken over the roles of uh, being a, a representative of South Africa at FIDE level, yeah. which includes um, making sure that if you apply for your for your 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 arbitral license, yes, you have got to do it through him, no longer through the executive committee. Okay. If players have got to apply for titles, they are no longer going through Gunter and the executive committee. They are going through the reverse delegate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the, the issue of who attends FIDE meetings and so on. Those Wait, are the decisions. But sorry, sorry, sorry. You just mentioned Gunther. I'm just wondering, does Gunther also fall on the, on the in the same suspension as everyone else in the executive board? <laughs> No, actually, Gunther won't say it's expended. It's it's it's, it's suspended. Gunther has never been the executive. The executive he has no he has never been in the executive committee of. Chester. So he's not suspended. So he's not out. In part, he has been used by the executive committee to perform the duties of rating the tournament and so on and submitting the. The, the applications for titles and so on and so on on behalf of the executive committee. So he can't play that role anymore. So he can't play the role anymore? No. But can he play he the role of rating FIDE uh, tournaments? No, 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 no. Submitting a FIDE tournament, you don't have to go through Gunter. You go through the reverse delegate. <laughs> we, we can even send you the, the, the link, which uh, if you want any tournament to be rated by by locally by South Africa, what do you do? And then for that tournament to be registered as a federated tournament, what do you do? <laughs> we need that. What? Like, please, we need that. Because we're speaking... You, 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 you do it through the, the, the reverse delegate. Now, what the reverse delegate has not done so far mm. was to take the other administrative duties like the bank account, the... the, the the reports, the compilation of audited financial statements and so on and so on, which is what the provinces have insisted 
Yeah. They have insisted strongly on the meeting of the 19th with Sarskog that, look, uh, you cannot just take quarter or half of the responsibilities. Everything else also has got to be uh, managed elsewhere because the finances, the audited financial statements, the other reports, and so on and so on, they also have got to be taken care of. That mm -hmm. is that is when at that meeting with Sarskog, Sarskog has then agreed that they are going to have a meeting with the reverse delegate where they are going to deal with the aspects of the account, yes. the aspects of uh, um, uh, audited, how to compile those reports, which uh, will then lay to rest the issue of financial reporting. Oh. So, yes. Okay. So, according to our, us as provinces and according to uh, SASCOC, they agree that that part is a grey area which needs to be needs to be taken care of. So, and yesterday there was a meeting with uh, with, uh, with with the reverse delegate and the provinces Okay. I think uh, he also agreed that uh, he would be finalizing that aspect with with uh, Sasko in their meeting. Can we talk a bit about that meeting, like with the reverse delegate and uh, the meeting that took place last night with the reverse delegate and uh, is it the council, the executives of the provinces? It is the provinces. It is the presidents of the provinces. In fact, it's the presidents and the secretaries and whoever the president of the province nominates to be part of that meeting. In other words, it's like a council meeting. Yes. A chess is a council meeting with the with the president of Chess South Africa. This time, the reverse delegate. So, what were the aims of the meeting from yesterday, from last night? That was between the council well, meeting and the way. The way I understood it uh, was that uh, uh, the council wanted certain things to be dealt with quicker. Yeah. For an example, international selections. Because remember, the players are not stopped from participating internationally. Yes. Uh, it is just that uh, who must do that part is the reverse delegate. Okay. Who must take care of uh, how the players are selected and so on. In view of the fact that the reverse delegate doesn't know what is happening at the ground, mm. on the ground with regard to the selection, the council wanted to bring to the attention of the reverse delegate that that part must be clearly defined so that nobody gets confused. So, and uh, it was agreed that everything else will be handled by him. No longer by the, the, the suspended uh, executive board who claims to, to select players. No mm. ways. Uh, that would be truly in his hands. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, the reverse delegate, I'm saying the, the council mm -hmm. wanted to get clarity on how the process of its election will take place. Remember, in South Africa, you don't just buzz in and call people to a meeting for, for elections. Yes. There is an established uh, standards and procedures in terms of the Constitution. You need to, you need to appoint an election officer. Yes. In terms of the Constitution, the election officer has got to be appointed by the executive board. Now, the executive board doesn't exist. Right. Yes. Uh, so, so that that remains a grey area, uh, which logically it will mean the FIDE task force can appoint that, but the the the, the council has got a different view that uh, because the, the the process is a bit complex, it should not just be left to one or two people to deal with, but then the reverse delegators agreed that that part will be put on the table to be discussed, which is something which is very good and is giving confidence to everyone that everything else will be held, will be, will be, will, will be held in a proper manner. Mm -hmm. The third point which the council wanted to bring to the attention of the reverse delegate was what happens administratively in between from now until the elections are held. So from the reverse delegate, it became very clear that the administrative activities of Chess South Africa are under him. Yes. Mm. It's very clear, and all of us agree, okay. that they are under him, and then we will 
if he wants to consult the different stakeholders, he should be able to do so. But Independently, the, the without council, consulting first with the um, with the with the council, does he need to go through the council with everything? Uh, just have the council's approval before speaking to certain people, or can he speak to anyone as the executive? Part of that. Part yeah. that, that, that is what that is what the council was pressing on, in view of the fact that it, the reverse delegate doesn't know the situation in South Africa, yes. so he shouldn't just fall trap to speak to everyone about everything. So, but I think he appreciated the fact that uh, yes, indeed, the the provinces are very a very very important structure of chess, a layer of a structure in chess, very very important, and he respected the contributions that were made. Mm -hmm. Although, in his own view, he says, in terms of listening, <laughs> in terms of just listening to anyone, yes, he he will listen to anyone, yes. Uh, it's like the president of South Africa. If a player from a particular corner calls you, mm. uh, you're bound to listen, but it doesn't mean you will act according to what the player says yeah. must be done. Mm. So, and the, the, the council made it very clear yesterday that he should not fall trap to that one, where he listens to everybody and then he acts according to what they say. He must recognize the established structures in Czech South Africa, which includes council, council of provinces, yes, and yes. then you should consult with them. I think uh, as far as I understood, uh, he fully agreed with that. But then now, now can you just go back to, you were telling, you were saying there's a, uh, a, fee, a feed a task force, but last time I yes. checked, there was also a project team from SASCOC. Yeah, they, they, uh, uh, look, uh, there's just many ways for one thing. Yeah. Uh, remember, Sasquatch's role is not to run Czech South Africa. Okay. They are not supposed to run South Africa at all. Mm. Uh, Chess must be run by Czech people. Yes. So Sasquatch has realized that in terms of the membership requirements, South Chess South Africa was no longer meeting that. One of which is, remember that something upset happened. Uh, the previous executive just suspended all the provinces. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Technically, by itself, you just killed the organization. Yeah. Because from SASCO point of view, for any national federation to claim to be a national federation, it must have at least five provincial structures. Yes. So if all is suspended, it means just South Africa doesn't exist. <laughs> that is why now that prompted uh, South Africa to say, no, 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 there's something wrong with chess. Let's get you right. Mm. So South Africa then said, okay, we hear what has happened. Now the executive board could not budge in convincing South Africa that things are normal. And yeah. then the Sasco Assembly eventually took a resolution to suspend Church of Africa. Mm. Now, as Sasco, they want to help the 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 structures of South of Church South Africa to get into whatever you call it good standing mm. in order to hold a national elective AGM. Yes. So what Sasco is doing, they put up their so-called project team. Okay. The purpose of their project team is to work with the provinces through their provincial sports confederation okay. and check if indeed uh, Limpopo did, did not meet the compliance requirements. If Limpopo meets the compliance requirements, then Sasco will take to say, no, Limpopo is in order. They will check Western Cape, they will check Mpumalanga, they will check all of them working with their provincial sports confederation. If Sasco finds that everybody else meets the ticks, then Sasco will assist in making sure that an AGM is convened mm -hmm. where the elections, proper elections take place. But that process of convening the national election will not be convened by Sasco. It will be convened by field. Oh, okay. 
But suit. SAFCOC plays a logistical support so, to the provinces to meet the requirements so that SAFCOC can tick, 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 tick. And then so basically, the, the SAFCOC project team comes in because the provinces are suspended because they don't meet the minimum the, or the, the criteria of good standing. And then they are there to assist the provinces in meeting those criteria of good standing. Yes, exactly. Although I don't agree entirely that the provinces were not were not meeting the good standing. But then, remember, there was a standoff between the provinces and the executive board. Yes, because they, the the provinces were saying one of the requirements for good standing is that you must pay your as a province you pay your annual membership fees, which is how much. To, to national, which is six thousand. Yes. Now the provinces were saying, no. Before we pay six thousand, can you report financially? Okay. <laughs> on the previous ex- or on the payments that were done before. Yes. Now the, the executive board could not budge on 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 reporting, because the only reporting from the executive board is to produce a detailed financial statement. Yes. Call call a council meeting. Yeah. And present the audited financial statements. Members debate it, which is a normal thing within any organization. So basically, they, the, 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 they don't, the executive did not deserve to get paid because, I mean, it makes sense not to pay uh, <laughs> the, the annual fees unless you're shown how the previously paid annual fees were used or if they were used accordingly. Exactly. That is why the provinces withheld their payments. They said, no, no, no. Mm-hmm. We can't pay until we see the reports of the previous payments. Mm. That is why there was a standoff. And then, it, and as a result, the executive board then decided to say, okay, because you can't bring these documents, you are no longer in good standing, you are suspended. Yeah. But then, uh, how many of the provinces are properly structured? Like, say, out of the nine provinces that we have there, how many of them have had uh, proper elections and like proper democratic elections and uh, have a proper functional structure? Would you say? I, I can assure you, uh, Eddie, there's, there's quite a lot of them. So the more than five? Provin- the, more than five. The only two provinces which did not hold a, any elections to elect the executive board of the province. Mm. It's only Eastern Cape and Pumalanga. Yeah, because I wonder if Pumalanga even has a budget. I wonder if Pumalanga has, would even afford that 6,000 rand like, that they're asking because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, affording is a different thing. Remember, even within feed, you know? Yeah. Even within feed, if a member uh, federation mm. cannot pay its annual membership fees, yes. what happens with feed is that you explain why you cannot pay. Mm. And then feed will then bring other things to try guide you on what to do and so on. Yes. Uh, until you are extremely, extremely owing many years, is yeah. then that you are put on a list of uh, members who are going to be suspended if they cannot. Uh, doesn't FIDA doesn't wake up today and say because you didn't pay that you are suspended? No, because because I mean I think it's it's the role of the higher structure. Like for instance, with Chess South Africa, in terms of the in, in relation to the provinces, I think. If a province is unable to comply, I think it is upon it is a responsibility of Chess South Africa, the higher structure, to assist them at the lower level, to show them the way and actually strengthen. Yes. yes, I think yes. I think that's instead of discarding, instead of suspending. I think the role of the higher structure is to say we will. Um, I'm looking for the word. I, 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 what's the what's the, Hey, capacitate you. Let me just put it that way. <laughs> That's right. If it's a matter That's of right. lacking capacity, so instead of suspending, we'll provide you with uh, one or two people that can assist you here and there in order for you to be able to... Because it is to the benefit of Chess South Africa to have the provinces compliant, to have the provinces functional. To have the prov- exactly. Yes. Exactly, uh, Eddie. Mm. Look, if you are developmental in approach yeah. rather than punitive in approach, mm. you... you, you, you the structure will function very well. For an example, if you are developmental, you will realize that, okay, Limpopo did not pay their annual membership fee of 6,000. Yes. What you do as a national structure through either the treasury or any other, you then inquire what, what is wrong. 
Yeah. And then Limpopo will then say, okay, uh, we don't have funds and so on. Remember, funds are everywhere. There are small <laughs> tournaments which are run where people pay yes. entry fees of 30 rand or, or 50 rand. Mm. You could guide Limpopo to say, no, look, you are running these other tournaments. Uh, in your entry fees of your 30 rand or 40 rand, dedicate your five rand or ten rand towards towards paying your fees yes because you are keeping the other money for your own administration but dedicate a certain amount yeah and then i'm giving you two to uh, maybe a year or so to work on it if they don't know how to do it as you said Eddie, then you will then dispatch somebody who shows them how to do it yeah you are developmental in approach you know that once limpopo achieves it may may not be in the same situation again because they know what to do and how to do it and that way yes. you get your revenue again as a <laughs> that way you get your revenue again yes. you have developed even a skill in a particular province yes to, yes. to be able to function on their own and then you know that uh, look across your your your, your country you have built skills everywhere on the financial management. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then you can also, one of the things that can also be done is also to link the, maybe Limpopo, I'm just using Limpopo because I come from Limpopo. I don't want to use another province. And you are the deputy president of Limpopo right now, am I correct? Yes, currently. Oh, all right. <laughs> so, so you find that uh, maybe in Limpopo, they, did, they, didn't, they didn't link up with their with the provincial department. It's the role of national to come in and say, but you are also missing an opportunity here. Yeah. Because you are not attending your provincial sports confederation activities. Mm. You are not linking up with them because they are providing funds for training out of which you can even raise your own. You see, in that case, you are developmental. You will develop everywhere else. But what has emerged since 2018 the issue of good standing was never used uh, 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 as, as, as an empowering aspect. Mm -hmm. It was used for exclusion and punishing others. It was weaponized. So if it you find that... Weaponized. It was weaponized against the people that should be assisted. That is why other provinces realized it. Instead, even if when they had money to pay, yes. they withheld their money. They then said, okay, it's, too, it's, it's tit for tat now. Mm. I give you my money, you give me your report. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then you've mentioned an interesting thing here. You've mentioned uh, the, what's this, uh, the con sports confederation, the provincial sports confederation. But I understand there's also regional sports confederation. And I'm mentioning this because I'm wondering now the, the role today... The, like you, you've mentioned that um, uh, for the elections to happen on a national level, there needs to be an elections officer appointed, uh, an independent elections officer that, get, that gets appointed and so forth. Yes. And I'm yes. wondering, like in the regions, what is, is, it, is, is the role or is there a role, maybe you can enlighten us now, of the regional sports confederation in the, that, that the regional um, chess federations could um, uh, dive into, maybe just to get some, um, I don't know, like, some, some like you've mentioned funds or any developmental training that they could get from that but then again could they or should they also be involved the regional sports confederations in terms of uh organizing elections or in the elections to ensure that there's no biasness because i mean we understand politics that in there's already politics in chess and in chess politics people can play tricks now in terms of uh, <laughs> running or calling the elections and trying to keep some people away and all of that do they have a role, the regional sports confederations, do they have a role within the regional chess federations? Yes, uh, Eddie, relationships is everything. Yeah. The reason that the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture National is able to allocate real funds to mm. the federations, it was born out of creating relationships and engaging with each other. Yeah. And then the national SASCO expects every member who exists nationally 
to be a member at the lower levels. For an example, Chess Limpopo is supposed to be a member of Limpopo Sports Confederation. Are they? And then when you are a member of Limpopo Sports Confederation, Limpopo Sports Confederation oversees your activities, including your elections. When elections are convened, I think they are there to oversee. Mm. You know? <laughs> and then some of them will even guide. Yes. If you feel like, look, uh, the people who want to appoint to be uh, elections officers, maybe we need a better cloud. You can even ask them to do that job for you. Because in terms of the constitution, the elections officers are appointed by the executive committee. Mm. For an example, uh, uh, just as a executive committee at national level, within uh, before they issue a notice, they must first sit and decide who is going to be the elections officer. Yeah. Appoint that person, issue a notice with that person's name and contacts on the notice. The same happens should happen with the province. Yeah. The same should happen with the region. But then now, what happens with the regions that don't exist? Because like we've got the regions that don't exist. And I'm talking about, I'm going to be specific as well. I'm speaking of Mpumalang. Regions that don't have executive committees. Who should go, like, should the clubs go visit the, develop, the what, sorry, what do we call the um, confederations officers, the sports confederations, the regional co sports confederations, and ask them, or should the province do that on, uh, on behalf? Actually, actually, without interjecting, yes. if we are following protocol very well, mm. uh, if a province doesn't exist or its executive committee is somehow in, in the problem, Yes. It's no longer compliant. Yes. It is the national office that must zoom in and correct that. In okay. other words, Chess South Africa Executive Board must correct the situation. Mm. If it is the region and the, the province exists, then it is the province executive committee that, that must good. zoom in and correct, help correct the situation of the region. In other words, if a region doesn't exist any longer, yes. there is no executive committee, there is no accountability, there is nobody reporting to anyone, yeah. then then the, the provincial executive committee, whether permanent or, 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 or interim, mm. it mm. is their role to zoom into that district, call the stakeholders in that district, the first stakeholders are clubs. Yeah. Call those clubs in that in that region mm -hmm. and say, guys, we are not seeing your region or your district functioning properly at provincial level. Therefore, we want you to correct the situation. And then the process of correcting it will be to hold a new election which will follow the constitution. So the first thing is that the provincial structure will visit the district, the clubs at the district and engage them in that. Yeah. And then if the provincial structure does not do that, the clubs in that region, it's my advice, they should also approach the provincial structure and say, we are in touch as here, we mm. don't exist. We need to be put in order because our interest of playing chess needs to be catered for. Yeah. Can you come in and correct the situation? Yeah. And then in the event the provincial structure doesn't budge on the request, then the clubs can now look elsewhere. The, yeah. first, the first area to look elsewhere outside the chess structure. It's your province. It's your sports confederation. Your regional confederation. Either the regional sports confederation or the provincial sports confederation. Sorry, Mr. Mahmoud. Let me just because uh, I see that we're running out of time. I think we're about, about about two minutes. Who's in the FIDE task force? I think you're about you're close. You're about to mention that, and I'm I'm, I'm afraid that some people would. <laughs> okay. No, no. The FIDE task force consists of uh, the, the 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 continental uh, FIDE advisor, which is. Bennett Wanjala from Kenya. From from Kenya. 
Yeah, he's, he's the president of Kenya, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then it consists of the reverse delegate. Yes. And then it it consists of the FIDE uh, legal advisor, which is uh, Martinov. Martinov. Yes, Martinov. Have you guys met him yet? Martinov, no, no. We met him in the previous life. <laughs> <laughs> Remember the, pro the, the, the problem of South Africa doesn't start now. It started in 2018. Yes, when, yes. When there were halubaloos and so on, when there were court cases and everything. Of course. So they put him in now because at least he understands the situation of Chess South Africa. <laughs> yeah, so so we we engaged him extensively, mm. uh, although we didn't like his responses and so on. That is why maybe now he is playing a very minimal uh, presence. Uh, <laughs> I think he's aware he's aware of what happened in the past. Mm. He wants to give new blood a chance to attempt to to resolve the problem. So he's probably yeah. just consulting now. So they just come to him and say, "This is what we have so far," and then he just guides yes, here and yes. there. <laughs> yes, yes. He's no longer playing an active role like before. So, and I think it's good for Chess. Uh, from my personal perspective, mm. the two people who are very active in engaging the chess community in South Africa, which is the the uh, continental advisor and the the, the reverse delegate. Yes. Uh, from my own impression. Uh, they seem to share the same principles mm. on how things should be done. Maybe because they come from Africa. Remember, oh, the, yes. previ the previous reverse delegate was coming from Jamaica. Yes, yes. He, so didn't, even the... know. he didn't even know what is happening here. <laughs> because, remember, I can tell you, uh, uh, um, uh, Eddie, I, I traveled in many, many, many countries. In many countries, there is no consistent and a good structure that exists in chess like it is in South Africa. I can assure you. Okay. In other areas, you just get a group of players somewhere and assemble them and elect a national, a national leader. A national structure. This is, I think, right? <laughs> just like that. Just like that. And even those players, you cannot even account where they come from. I can call my cousins. I can call everyone. As long as I can, I can amass a lot of numbers. That's the uh, jeez. <laughs> unfortunately, unfortunately, maybe some of the people who have been who have been uh, directed to intervene in South Africa, they 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 don't understand this structure that Chess South Africa has evolved to a very structured and well set out structure in terms of the constitutionality and we have operated that way for a long time mm. some still think chess is just by the wayside like in many other countries but then before you go before we end this mr mahawala is there any like do we have like do we have a message of hope from you like i i think it's looking hopeful will we be having an elections within the next two months and maybe about 10 days is this something that we can look forward to are we hopeful as yeah uh, as uh, as a conclusion to all of this for, for me, the way things are moving, mm. uh, I'm hopeful that uh, we, we will have free and fair elections in three months. There are only two determinants yeah. to this process. The first part is how to set up the election officer. Okay. Because that is critical. Mm. In terms of the constitution of Chess South Africa, uh, the election officer uh, has, holds a very important and powerful part. Yeah. It, it, it uh, adjudicates over the legitimacy of the candidate. Which yes. means if you are nominated as a candidate, were you properly nominated, do you really stand a chance in terms of the regulations? Mm -hmm. So... That is very important. And uh, secondly, the elections officer also deals with the issue of credentials who are eligible to nominate and get nominated, mm. which calls for the issue of good standing. Okay. Once the issue of good standing is dealt with, 
the all principles are agreed to, yeah. which will be discussed with the reverse delegate soon, and the attitude of the reverse delegate and some members of the of, of, of the task force yeah. seem to be going in the same direction as many people think. Mm -hmm. That part, if, if it's going to be properly handled, and then the elections officer appointed, I can assure you, <coughs> there will be proper elections okay no we're glad i think that's a very hopeful message we'll end it there i think um it has been a, a whole hour of speaking to mr mahomula thank you very much by joe mahomula for this opportunity and for being um present to share your knowledge and experience because i think it is of the, what made this is the knowledge like you you guys, you guys have heard him like uh hopefully we're gonna get a chance to speak to mr mahomula again i think it's cut off right now because we ran out of time i think we had about an hour of talk time and now we're done this has been chess and wine and from me ad i'm not going to try and summarize anything right now but from the next shows maybe from the next episodes we'll be trying to do that a bit of this and that and maybe uh, again if you guys have any more questions we can have right joe back again to speak to us um this has been uh chess and wine and i've always been and always will be ad be like good night <laughs>